Hey, and welcome once again to Ancient Ways for Modern Days. My name is Mike Freeman, pastor at Valley Christian Fellowship, and today we are in Romans chapter 9. Now, really, Romans chapters 9, 10, and 11, they, they kind of be kind of need to be viewed as a package. You know, there's uh, isolated portions in each that can give us um, some ideas about how this amazing salvation we have works. But, uh, but if we just take them in isolation, we miss the full picture of, of how salvation works. And so if you're tuning in, and this is Romans 9, uh, I really want to encourage you to listen to this one as well as the next two um, as they're released over the next few days. Or if you're catching up, just listen to them all together. That way you can get an impression of uh, God's sovereign hand as well as mankind and, and our responsibility and uh, our responsibility to trust in him. And so what we're going to see here as we jump in, Romans chapter 9, starting in verse 15, we're going to see how God is sovereign over the salvation of mankind, how God sovereignly chooses those who are his. Now this is, uh, again, this needs to be paired with chapter 10. I want you to come back tomorrow and hear the, the big picture of how this works. But Romans chapter 9, um, I'm, my text is off here, but let me back up. Starting in verse 15. Here's what it says. It's for, it says, For he says to Moses, God speaks to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. Now, this is God speaking about the one he shows his mercy to. Verse 16, so then it depends not on human will or exertion, but on God who has mercy. Now, when we receive the mercy of God, we are not receiving the mercy of God because of anything good we've done. It's not about our desire, our motivation, human will. It's not about our effort, our striving, our working for salvation, uh, our exertion. It's dependent upon God, God who has mercy. Verse 17, for the scripture says to Pharaoh, for this very purpose, I have raised you up that I might show my power to you and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. Well, how, how did God show his, his power in Pharaoh? Well, God hardened the heart of, hard heart of Pharaoh. Pharaoh did some hard hardening of his own heart, and God hardened Pharaoh's heart. But but in this, we, we have this commentary that Pharaoh was raised up for the very purpose of God showing his power, his power in the these ten plagues that came upon Egypt, and this power in God's mighty hand, rescuing the people of Egypt, Egypt, or the people of Israel out of Egypt when he saved them through splitting the Red Sea and then having those waves come crashing down upon Pharaoh. This is God saying, I am going to show my mercy to Israel and I'm going to show my power by raising up Pharaoh who will resist my ways. Verse 18, so then he has mercy on whomever he wills and he hardens whomever he wills. Verse 19, you'll say to me then, why does he still find fault? If God's the one that hardens hearts, how, how can God find fault in me if I have a hard heart? Who can resist his will? Verse 20, but who are you, O man, to answer back to God? Will that, will, excuse me, will what is molded say to the molder, why have you made me like this? Now this text as a whole is, it, it is a difficult text. And uh, I've heard it said this is not a difficult text to understand, but it's a difficult text to feel. Uh, God's sovereign hand over all of mankind, God's sovereign hand over us, the, the reality that God is so supreme, he has such great dominion and authority that he can harden whoever he wills. And he can show mercy and compassion on the one he wills. That offends our sensibilities. We want to be the captain of our own ship. We want to be the masters of our own destiny. We want to say it's because of something I did that I received this mercy or that I received this grace. But in fact, it's God's sovereign working in our lives. So go back to that phrase. Well, how can God find fault? How can I be held responsible? We're going to look 
chapter 10 a little bit more of that and chapter 11. But here's the ancient way for the modern day. If you hear this and you're offended that God is God, because ultimately that's that's what we're saying. We, we, we take offense that God is God, that we are his creation. If, if, if you're offended, I, I want you to put yourself in the place of being the one molded. We, we can't critique the one who molds us. But here's my message to you today. If in fact you're hearing this, if in fact you're reading this scripture, I, I would encourage you to realize this is God's molding in your life as he is intending for the, the gospel of Jesus Christ to shape you and to transform you. This is God putting his hands upon you to deliver you from your sin, to deliver you from your rebellion, to deliver you and, and me f- from our wickedness. See, instead of complaining or being frustrated that God is God and that he is sovereign and he in fact is the one who can mold and shape us. In this moment, I want you to recognize that as you hear his words, his purpose is being worked in your life to mold you and to make you into the image of Christ that by faith you will be saved. Well, let me just lay it out there. God, God is a sovereign God. He, he is the one who gives us into the hands of Jesus. He, he in his, his wisdom, he is the one who saves his people. And we can be offended at that or we can trust. The, the, the very act of you hearing this right now means he is working to save you. And the very reality that you are in the lives of other believers means that he wants to use you to save them as well. We can get frustrated theologically and wring our fist to the Lord, or we can accept his molding and his call, and we can see that call as a commission into the lives of others as, as we move forward in hope, trusting that God's going to use us to point others to his grace and his mercy. See, ultimately, we, we act in line with this, but but really the ancient way for the modern day is to rejoice in God's sovereign hand over your life. If you're hearing this, believe that he loves you. If you're hearing this, trust in the Savior, Jesus, in his his perfect life, and then in his substitutionary death on your behalf and on mine. If you're hearing this, rejoice that his hands are molding you to become more like Christ. This is the ancient way for our modern day in, in Romans chapter 9.